Welcome to this lecture about different validation techniques for binary classification. In the previous videos about sensitivity, specificity and RC curves, we have seen how we can calculate how well a biomarker can detect or exclude a disease given a certain cutoff value. In this example, we have seven patients with prostate cancer and seven healthy controls. If you use the following cutoff value for the prostate specific antigen concentration in blood as a threshold to predict if someone has prostate cancer or not, these five individuals will be correctly predicted to have prostate cancer because they have a PSA level that is greater than the cutoff value. Whereas these two persons who actually have prostate cancer will be predicted to be healthy because the PSA level is below 2.25. Since 5 out of the 7 individuals with the disease were correctly predicted to have prostate cancer, the sensitivity is here 71%. Since 6 out of the 7 healthy individuals were correctly predicted to be healthy, the specificity is estimated to 86%. However, what would happen if we collected 7 new patients with prostate cancer and seven new healthy controls. Would we get the exact same sensitivity and specificity with a cutoff value of 2.25? Probably not. For example, let's say that we measured the PSA level of 14 new individuals and got the following observations. We see that we now instead get 86% sensitivity and 71% specificity. For this data set, it seems better to reduce the cutoff value to 2.0 because we will then improve the sensitivity. Suppose we collected a third data set and used the cutoff value 2.25 again. Just by chance, we happen to select patients with prostate cancer with a relatively high PSA level and healthy controls with a relatively low PSA level. As you see, we get 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity. Every time we get new data, we usually get new estimates of the sensitivity and specificity. When we set the cutoff value, we use a value that optimizes the sensitivity and specificity based on our data. Those estimates usually overestimate the true sensitivity and specificity because if we get new data, we usually get worse estimates of the sensitivity and specificity because the selected cutoff value has not been optimized based on the new data. When we have few data points, there is also big uncertainty in the sensitivity and specificity because there is then a large variation between the data sets. This is why we need to validate our results. The most common validation methods are the holdout method and the K-fold cross-validation method. The holdout method splits the data into a so-called training dataset and a test dataset. A certain fraction of the data is used to build the model and set an optimal cutoff value. Building a model could involve that they combine several biomarkers with methods such as logistic regression or decision trees. However, in this lecture we will only use one variable and the training data will therefore only be used to identify the best cutoff value. Once we have trained our model and identified a good cutoff value based on the training data set, we use a new data set the so-called test dataset, to determine the accuracy, sensitivity and specificity based on the model and the cutoff value we decided for the training dataset. In contrast, the k cross-validation method uses all data points for both training and testing. Each data point is therefore used both as training data and as test data. The k fold cross-validation methods are preferred when we have small datasets. 
We'll now have a closer look at the whole lot method by using some fictive example data where the PSA level has been measured on 20 patients with prostate cancer and 20 healthy controls. Let's say that we have 20 patients with prostate cancer and 20 healthy controls. For the whole dot method, we randomly assign that, for example, 50% of the individuals from each group should go into the training group and 50% into the test group. We randomize so that half of the patients with prostate cancer goes into the training group and half into the test group. Then we also randomly assign the healthy controls into the training group and the test group. Note that there is no simple rule for the proportions that we should use in the training group and the test group, but one usually uses a greater proportion for the training group, especially if we like to train an advanced model. Then we pull the training group for the patients with prostate cancer with the training group for the healthy controls. We also pull the individuals from the two test groups. We then measure the PSA level of the 20 individuals in the training group and plot their values in the following plot. These are the PSA levels of the ones in the training group. Based on the PSA levels from the training data, we might decide that a good cutoff value to predict prostate cancer is 2.2 because it separates the groups quite well. We now remove the data from the training group and test how well a threshold of 2.2 can predict prostate cancer based on our test data set, which can be seen as new data. We obtain the PSA levels for the ones in the test group and plot the data points. Since 8 out of the 10 patients with prostate cancer in the test data set were correctly predicted to have prostate cancer based on a fixed cutoff value, the sensitivity is 80%. And since 7 out of the 10 healthy controls are predicted to be healthy, the specificity is 70% based on the test data. Given a cutoff value of 2.2, these are the estimated sensitivity and specificity based on the test data. These estimates better reflect how well the test will perform when we use it on new data. Note that the test data set includes only 20 data points, which results in a large uncertainty. A single data point on either side of the cutoff line will cause a 10% difference in the specificity or sensitivity. The holdout method should therefore only be used when we have several hundreds of data points in the test group. For smaller datasets, the K-full cross-validation method is a better alternative. Note that if you have calculated the sensitivity and specificity on the training data, we would have got 90% sensitivity and 80% specificity because we have selected a cutoff value of 2.2 which maximizes these metrics. However, when we use the same cutoff value on the new data, our test data, the sensitivity and specificity are expected to be reduced because we are no longer allowed to change the cutoff value to fit the data. When we do not have a large data set, the K-full cross-validation is a better alternative to predict the accuracy of our model. Cross-validation will give us an insight of how well the model would perform on an unknown dataset. A common cross-validation technique is the K-full cross-validation, where the data is divided into K-equal samples. Suppose that this is your complete dataset with all the data points. The first step in K-full cross-validation is to randomize the order of the data points in the dataset. 
In this example, we use a four-fold cross-validation, which means that we use the first 25% of the data points as test dataset, and the rest as a training dataset. We train our model, or simply find a good cutoff value, just as we did with the holdup method, based on the training data. We then use the test data to determine, for example, the accuracy of the model. Let's say that the accuracy was calculated 88%, which means that the model made 88% correct predictions. We'll now repeat the second and the third step. We first put back the test data set so that these data points are now used to train the model together with the last 50% of the data points. These data points are now selected to belong to the test dataset. We fit them all with the training dataset and determine its accuracy based on the test dataset. For example, let's say that we got an accuracy of 85% this time. We then repeat these steps again a third time which for example results in an accuracy of 90%. Finally, these data points are used as training data. Whereas the last 25% of the data points are used as test data. Let's say that this results in 89% accuracy. To calculate the accuracy of our model or biomarker, we take the average of the performance results. The mean accuracy is equal to 88%, which is the accuracy reported by the four-fold cross-validation for this example. Note that each data point takes part in the test dataset only once, but three times in the training dataset. It is also common to do some sort of stratification so that we have about the same proportions of disease cases and healthy controls in each k fold. This will ensure that the test dataset does not include data points from only one group by chance. In the previous example, we used a four fold cross validation. There is no rule for what values we should use for k. But a 10-fold cross-validation has been shown to perform well and is therefore commonly used. Another type of approach would be to draw a random sample to obtain the test dataset and the training dataset. By using such an approach, each data point can be included many times in the test dataset. Whereas some data points, by chance, will never be selected to participate in a test group. One special type of a k-fold cross-validation method is obtained when k is set equal to the number of observations. Then, only one data point at a time is used in the test dataset. This is called lee one out cross-validation. This method is commonly used when the sample size is small. The Liban out cross validation method is a procedure that can be explained by the following simple steps. In the first step, we fit the model or set the cutoff value, or both, based on all the data except one data point which is left out. After the cutoff has been determined or model has been fitted, check if the data point that was left out is classified correctly or not based on our model. Then we repeat step 1 and 2 for all data points. And finally we calculate the performance, such as the sensitivity and specificity. To explain how the Lee one cross-validation works, let's consider the following example data, where one has collected the PSA level from 10 individuals with prostate cancer and 10 healthy controls. The Lee one out cross-validation begins by setting aside the first data point like this. 
Then we fit the mold based on all the data points except the first data point, which we left out in the previous step. In our example, the mold simply represents a cutoff line that has to be set according to some rule. For simplicity, the cutoff values used in this example were selected as the ones representing the top left corner from the ROC curve, which is here referred to as the best cutoff value. When we use all data points, except the first data point, a cutoff value of 2.8 was selected as the best value. After the cutoff value has been selected, the data point that was left out is put back to see if it is correctly predicted or not. Since the data point, which comes from the healthy group, is above the cutoff line, this healthy individual is incorrectly predicted to have prostate cancer. Next, we set aside data point number two. Based on all the data points, except the second data point, the best cutoff value is now 2.0. When we put back data point number two, which is the PSA value from the healthy group, we see that it is incorrectly predicted to have prostate cancer because it is above the cutoff line. Next, we set aside data point number three. The best cutoff line according to all data points, except the third data point, is now a horizontal line at 2.8. When we put the third data point back, we see that it is correctly predicted because it is a healthy individual that is below the line. Next, we set aside data point number 4 and calculate the cutoff value. We see that data point number 4 is also correctly predicted. We continue like this 14 times more and note that we have made two incorrect predictions so far out of the 18 observations. We then set aside data point number 19. The best cutoff value is now 3.4. And when we put this data point back, which represents a PSA value of a person with prostate cancer, we see that the person is incorrectly predicted to be healthy because it has a PSA value below the cutoff value. Finally, we set aside the last data point. Find the best cutoff line, and when we put the last data point back, we see that it is also incorrectly predicted. We have now tested all the data points. We can see that 16 out of the 20 data points were correctly predicted. Based on the Lee one out cross-validation method, the accuracy is therefore 80%. Since 8 out of the 10 healthy controls were correctly predicted, the specificity is equal to 80%. And since 8 out of the 10 individuals with prostate cancer were correctly predicted to have prostate cancer, the sensitivity is also equal to 80%. This was the end of this lecture about validation. In future videos, we'll see how we can build models of several biomarkers to improve the predictions.